Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum bit flips to convert number. I'm going to solve this problem three ways. They're all pretty similar. Like the first two are going to be on order of like whatever the size of the integer is. So I'm saying 32 here because generally integers are 32 bits. And so the second solution is going to be the same. Technically, this is a constant. The third solution is hard to put into like big O time complexity, but it's going to be basically like whatever the result is. So it's going to be less than or equal to 32, I guess, in the worst case. But it's technically the most optimized solution. And this is probably the most interesting one. I would say it's a pretty neat solution. So it's worth watching that. It'll only take me a few minutes to explain it, hopefully. So we have two integers that we're given. All we want to do is count the number of differing bits. That's it. So this is the binary representation of seven. Remember in binary, this is the ones place. This is the twos place. So let me just kind of say one, two. This is the fours place. This is the eights place. If you need a lesson on binary, this is not so different than base 10. Remember with base 10, if I have a number like, uh, you know, 10,000 or whatever, I'll try to line it up here. This is the ones place in base 10. This is the tens place in base 10. This is the hundreds place in base 10, or in other words, 10 squared. This is 10 cubed. This is the thousands place. So that's what we're doing here. This is a two to the power of zero. This is two to the power of two. This is two to the power of three. And this is two, uh, I skipped a one, I'm very stupid, sorry. One, this is two to the power of two, this is two to the power of three. Sorry, this is very unreadable, but hopefully you get what I mean. So in terms of how we can solve this, one approach is just look at the ones place initially, check if the bits are differing. So extract the bit from this and extract the bit from that. There's two ways you can do this. You can take a number seven, mod it by two. You get the remainder, which is one. That tells you what's in the ones place. It's either gonna be a one or a zero. You could do the same thing with 10. 10 modded by two is gonna be zero. And now we check. Are these equal or are they different? They're different. So now our result initially is gonna be zero. This is the count, the number of differing bits. And now we're gonna increment it to one. We found a differing bit. Now we wanna look at the next position. Now there's a couple of different ways you could handle it. What we're gonna do is actually take all of these bits. The easiest way to do this is just take all these bits and shift them to the right by one. Alternatively, you could take this number and divide it by two. That would do the exact same thing, since when you divide by two, there isn't usually a remainder. But conceptually, I think that's pretty simple. So I'll just kind of X this out just to visually indicate that. And we'll do the same thing now. So this number, I think, represents three now. And this number represents five now. I mentioned that this is one way to do it using mod. You can also do something called like the ampersand logic and. So basically, you would take this value, one. It would have a bunch of leading zeros. And then it would have a one here. And you would take this number, bitwise and it. I don't know why I said logic and, sorry, bitwise and it. And everything here is going to be zero because everything here is zero. So all we're going to get is the value here. If it's a one, then the result here will be a one. If this was a zero, then the result here would be a zero. So those are a couple different ways of doing it, but that's the main idea. So now let's code it up. So I'm going to initialize the result to zero, and then I'm going to return the result. And then in the middle, let's compute it. Let's say while start or goal. So I guess I didn't mention this earlier, but if at least one of them has a one bit, we want to keep going. If both of them are zero, at that point, we're done. Like imagine you take a number like this, you keep shifting it to the right, meaning chopping off like the last bit. You keep doing that until there's no ones left. There's just a bunch of zeros. Then you know we're good because if both numbers have a bunch of zeros, then there can't possibly be any differing bits. So that's why we put the or here. If one of them has a one, then there's going to be a differing bit at least in that location. So we would need to account that one. So that's why we do this. And now I'm going to code up this. We want to know if they are different. So I'm going to get the bit from start. I'm going to do and one, and then I'm going to get the bit from goal and one, and then I'm going to check if they're different, then increment the result. And after that, we can update start and goal. So you could do it this way, dividing it by two. Uh, same with the goal. This will work. I'll prove it to you. Um, as you can see here, you could also flip these around. So you could do this bitwise, shift it to the right by one. Same thing with this. And I guess I could swap this one out too. I could, instead of anding it with one, I could mod this by two. So I'll do that here as well. I'll run this and show you that this one works as well. 
here you can see it does. Now for the second solution. Do you remember that there is something called the XOR, the exclusive OR? It looks at a position and if the two bits are different, then it'll put a one in the output. If they're the same, it'll put a zero in the output. If they were both one, it would put a zero. If they were both zero, then it would also put a zero. So the reason that this is kind of useful is when you do the bitwise XOR on both of these, you literally get the differing bits set in the result. So these are different, so we'll put a one here. These are different, put a one the same, put a zero different put a one and then you know the rest of these would be leading zeros i'm not going to draw them out now that we have this it's going to be as easy as taking a single number and just counting the number of one bits that are set in it pretty trivial now is this any more efficient than the previous solution i showed you not really but this solution is good because it's a good segue into the third solution i'm going to show you so i'm going to code this up now actually i forgot to mention that we are going to count the one bit so how do we do that well, it's going to be pretty similar to before. We're going to end it with one, and then we're going to get the result here. It's either going to be a zero or a one. In this case, it's one because this bit is set. They're both one. We get a one here. This is what we add to our result. If it were a zero, we would still add it to the result, but that wouldn't modify the result at all. And then after we do that, we're going to shift this to the right by one the same way. So we'd pretty much chop this guy off and then do the same thing here. Well, like that. So it's just going to keep going while this number is non-zero. So I'm gonna still have this result value being returned, but now I'm going to take start and the goal and XOR them. And this is the operator you can do for that, sorry. And while this number is non-zero, let's go ahead and get the bitwise and with one of it. So either this is gonna be a one or a zero, either way, add it to the result like this and then shift this number to the right by one and then set it to that. So I'll run this. As you can see, it works as well. It's just as efficient. Now for the third solution, which is slightly more efficient. So the next solution I'm gonna show you actually does have a name and it's pretty elegant. It's the same as before. Take these two numbers, XOR them, get the differing bits. Now we know like there's a bunch of leading zeros. I won't have them. What if there was a way that we could only count the bits in this number that are actually set because we know those are the ones that we wanna count. What if we could skip the zero bits and then not increment our result with those, like just skip them all together? Our solution would be slightly more efficient. Not that that really matters, but in case you are curious how this solution would work, let me show you. We want to take this number, essentially we want to remove the bit that is set and then increment our result. And then we wanna remove this bit and increment our result. And then we wanna remove this bit and then increment our result. Our result is three and now we have zero like bits that are set in this number, so now we're done. Is there a way that we can actually do this? Yes, and it's not magic. It's pretty much just math. If I want to remove the least significant bit, it's very easy to do so. Just minus one, right? Minus one, and then what do you get? You get one, one, zero, zero. And the reason that that works is because remember with base two, a position can either be zero or one. So by subtracting one from it, we're taking that number, that one specifically, and getting rid of it. And it doesn't only work in the ones place, actually. So now when we take this number and subtract one from it, there's nothing here to take away. There's nothing here to take away, but there is something to take away here. If you had a number like, let's say, 5343 or whatever, if you subtract one from any of these numbers, they don't necessarily turn into zero and then shift like to the right because this is base 10, but with base two, it's different. That's a special property of base two. By subtracting one from this, we're gonna take this guy and turn it into a zero. Specifically in this example, by minusing one, we're gonna get this, one, zero, one, one. But that didn't quite do what we wanted to, right? From here to here, we got rid of one bit. From here to here, we still did the minus one, we got rid of that bit, but we introduced two new bits that are set. What we actually wanted to get was this value. We wanted one, zero, zero, zero. We just wanted to get rid of that. Well, take a second to think about this. 
we started with this by minusing one we got here. Using these two numbers, is there a way that we could arrive at this number? Yes, by taking these two and anding them. Because remember, when we minus one, we're always gonna take the least significant bit that's set. Sure, by subtracting from it, by turning it into a zero, we might end up setting some bits to the right of it. Who cares? We know for sure originally those bits were not set. They were zero, they're guaranteed to be zero. And now some of them might be set. In fact, all of them are gonna be set. But it doesn't matter. If I do logic and here, or bitwise and, these are going to result in zero anyway. So that's the algorithm. Don't just minus one, then take the resulting value and the original value and bitwise and them. And that's how you can get rid of the least significant bit. So now I'm going to simulate this for you. Minus one from here, we get one, one, zero, zero. Bitwise and these, we basically just get rid of all this stuff. So we end up with one, one, zero still. Minus one again, we get one, zero, one, one. Bitwise and these, we get one zero 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 minus one from this you'll get zero one 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 i'm running out of space but if you bitwise and these two together clearly it'll be all zeros and that's how you know we're done how many times do we need to do this well one two and then three now let's code it up. So modifying this solution is actually pretty easy to get it into the form that we wanted. It's just gonna be this inside part. Well, each iteration of this loop is going to increment the result. We know that because this number is non-zero, we're gonna get rid of the least significant bit. And this is how we can do this by taking n and then taking n minus one and then bitwise anding them together and then set that back to n. So that is the solution. Let's run it. As you can see, it works. Technically, it's more efficient than the other two, but let's be honest, practically speaking, with a 32-bit integer, it's not gonna make a difference. I mean, maybe if you had an integer with like a thousand bits set, but I don't know why you would ever have such a large integer. Perhaps you're trying to build a scale to weigh your mom. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have made that joke. Anyways, just to change subjects really quickly, if you guys are interested in system design and coding interview prep and career advice, check out my free newsletter. Here's a bit of a preview for a video I'm gonna drop tomorrow. Stay tuned for that.